Okay, so hi everyone. Um, my talk today is about Telegram. So how many of you here has actually used or heard or known about Telegram? Oh, that's amazing. Okay, so um, I hate slides. Okay, tele my talk today is about using Telegram as a platform. So what is Telegram? Let's take a look. Oh God, I cannot alternate tab out. Oh, okay. So this is uh, this is Telegram. So um, there are clients for the Android, iPhone, and your desktop on Linux as well. So Telegram is essentially a messaging client. It's no, it's um, the, the good part about it is that it's op somewhat open. There's an API for it, for a command line client, uh, a bot, which is what I'm going to talk about. And as you can see, the many, many features of Telegram. So why switch to Telegram? Okay, I'm not going to sell Telegram here, but uh, I'll just move forward on uh, why I used Telegram. So. So this is my bunch of friends, and we, we have a chat group uh, that we use telegrams for. That we use Telegram for. So initially, we used WhatsApp. That was probably about uh, two two years ago. Uh, there was no desktop client, and and it was getting irritating to phone type 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 back code back to code and all that. So and even now, their yeah, desktop client is not very nice. And we used Hangouts. Hangouts. Um, we used Hangouts about uh, a bit more than a year ago. So the app was a bit unresponsive, and a bunch of other stuff which I didn't like. But I'm just biased. And we had a hipster in our group who didn't really like Google. So I don't want to sign up for a Google account to use Hangouts. Yeah. So this happens. Then um, I found out about Slack just this year. So Slack is uh, a tool uh, for team collaboration uh, used in develop development companies, I guess, software development companies, but it's a bit too complicated as a messaging client. There are channels, there are threads, upcoming threads, so um, it's a bit too complicated. So we just want to chat, you know. So Telegram launched um, late 2013. Thin, yeah, and they boast uh, that their client is good for security. They have secret chats, and and they do support a lot of uh, file types. Just um, off the shelf, it's just good. Uh, the best part is your 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 family, your your new uh, your tech muggle friends can can use it and and have no problem in integrating into it. It's just like WhatsApp, but it's better than WhatsApp. Okay, so let's just talk about uh, what I'm here, why I'm here today, okay? So Telegram has this thing called the bot API. Let's, oh yeah, here. So yeah, if you want to download Telegram, now you can. Uh, for the Android version, it is 13 Mac. And for the iPhone version, it's 31 Mac, but it's okay. Yeah. Uh, let's take a look at the bot API. So how would you use the bot API? Okay, let's say you have a bunch of friends or even yourself alone. You create a chat group, just like how WhatsApp has chat groups. You put the bot in your chat and you can send a bunch of commands to your bot. It can be anything. Uh, but you have to implement it. So um, much later, I'll tell you how easy it is to do it. So the bot API can get any messages uh, you send to it, um, any commands you send to it, and pass it and give you uh, certain results. And the best part is you can put it anywhere. Other people can use your bots. You can create a bot to to send you GIFs, GIFs of cats or something like that, slash GIF, then cat slash GIF, slash puppy, or something like that, yeah. So, 
Let's just take a look. What can I do with bots? I will tell you one of the ways you can use it. So let's just get dirty. Let me show you. So I just started off with um, Ruby and I really think Ruby is nice because there's a gen for everything. Uh, okay, so my problem, let's, let's just go one step before my bot implementation. So my problem was, I have a bunch of friends and when we meet, we don't know where to meet and we don't know where to eat because we always meet for dinner. So um, the very first uh, idea I had was, okay, let's come up with a map and a bunch of locations and let's find the average. And so this is the first version of um, my solution. And this was done in uh, during my lunch time, uh, one hour. It's just Google Maps, this thing, and yeah. So I guess, I don't know if it still works. Uh, I hope it works. Oh yeah, okay, so, so I can add a bunch of values, and when I do Shazam, like, okay, no, I don't want to do Shazam. I want to do Kapow, yeah, so let me just add another one. Uh, let's call this Bjorn. And I don't know if this will make any difference. Okay, that's probably too near. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't work. <gasps> doesn't work. Is it too near? I'm not really familiar with latitudes and longitudes. Ah, yeah, there are two. Yeah, so what it does is it actually it just calculates an average of, of this, this location and then when you do kappa, right, it actually gives you a third. Uh, oh, wait, yeah. Okay, sorry. <laughs> 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 so yeah, it's actually quite a crappy uh, implementation. Yeah, yeah it's a third uh, blip that says uh, somewhat the average. Oh, yeah, I actually added them. I actually added them. So, so yeah, um, this is actually quite crappy. And, and this was done in one hour, and this is like purely front end. So when this thing, this, this page goes away, all the all the data is not re, re, uh, retained. So let's just move on. Second second version. Okay, this is a bit uh, suitable for work. So so my friends, my genius friends. Okay, I, I I like them. They're really good. They are really good developers. So this is built on Tornado, and uh, it took about two or three days and a few people, about three or four people to do this. So, uh, I'm sorry for the language. So let's see if this still works. It gets a location and we are here. And if another person actually uses this URL to, to the session and, and, and updates his or her location, we can do a average or something like that. It's, it's been a while ago. So yeah, this took about, the, the essence of this is that it took about uh, two, three days and about three or four people. So yeah, this can be simpler. So here is where I begin uh, showing you what the bot is about. So what I want to tell you is to leverage uh, Telegram Telegram's available uh, client uh, <laughs> that uh, to to do your your bot thing. So, for example, yeah, this one, this bot is uh, what I have uh, implemented within about probably takes less than ten minutes to do this. I can show you right now. So, using <laughs> using uh, the available. Gem. Okay, I made a mistake for uh, implementing the Telegram bot API from scratch. Please do not do that. There is always a gem available for whatever you want to do. So yeah, go and search. This is a very good gem to, do, to use. Um, I'm just going to start developing. I mean, coding. So... First, you grab the data. Then... Um, 
you go to Bot Father on Telegram. Let me just delete everything. There. Okay. So when you search for Bot Father on Telegram, you can click Start and just generate a new bot. I can't type. And Bot Father will ask you what is the name of your bot. So just so I don't uh, use up names, I'm going to put a random name that nobody will ever take. And bot. So here he gave us uh, a token. Let's use this token. And now you see that over here we have uh, cloned the repository. So let's go into uh, Telegram. Uh, I believe it's in the examples file. Oh. oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Okay, so what happened previously was I, I cloned the repository that was shown here and I haven't done any coding yet. So in the, in the repo, examples is where you can actually start coding a bot. So let's just see, that's bot.rb. So this, this very simply tells you, shows you that uh, replace me with a bot, we are real token. Please do not put your token into your code. Use uh, environment variable, but because this isn't, uh, this isn't important. Right. Uh, to this. Oh. So let's just paste whatever you got from the bot father just now. And this should work. Let's quit. Mm hmm. Great, now I have to look for this bot. Hey, look, the bot is here. Let's just try. Um, I think one of the commands was start. Hey, look, our bot responded. Yeah, this is how easy it is to get a bot up. But hey, that's not it, right? It's not that. So, it's not so simple. We just don't want it to say hello. We want it to do something more, right? So let's just take a look at the code. Okay. So what it does is, this is a long polling uh, method to retrieve the information that uh, that you send to it. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail about what the bot can do, uh, the features of a bot, but if you go to bot father, he'll tell you many things that you can do. One of them that is quite important is set privacy. So set privacy by default is enabled. Uh, Bunch of balls that I use. <laughs> this one. Yeah, so enabled means that you will only receive messages that start with the slash. If you want to receive everything, including location, you need to disable it. So, um, <coughs> hey, hi. Uh, Message.txt is essentially the entire text that you tell the bot, including the command and the and anything that res that co that's after the command. So so this is very simple, it's just a switch case. Yeah, let me show you my bot. Uh, I made it really complicated. Um, wait, which one is it? Yeah, it started getting a bit more complicated, but but then it is but then it's just a few lines of code that does the implementation. So a bot can okay. I just show you how how this is done. Okay, 
So this is actually the WTF where the do we import. So uh, when I do when I send it a location. Okay, just take a look at line one seven two three four. So when I receive good day, it will ask me if it's a good day, and if I ask, if I tell, if I asked it what's my IP, it tells me the IP of my server, which is not needed. At least to our, our, our old you know, uh, old code. So the important thing is this one that's called MP and Jiffy. Okay, yeah, Jiffy. You let me show you an example. So over here, if I type GIF and I type cat, it actually it actually goes to uses the GIF API to receive a random GIF of, of a cat. So so yeah, it, it there's the same function for image as well, and you can even do YouTube YouTube. Uh, yeah, and you see, you see so so this this is just like one of the the few things that. We can do, you know, and the best part is you can add these bots into your chat groups with your family, uh, and they can use it. It's so easy to use it. You want to Google something, you just type uh, whatever you implement it to be. Like, uh, oh, uh, somebody asked you, Google, uh, I have a fever. How do I? How do I get? How do I not get a fever? So Google uh, cure fever. Then, then Jarvis will tell you. The bot will tell you. Okay, how do you treat a fever quickly? So, so this is something that that is actually really simple to do. So, um, my problem was uh, we don't know where to eat, right? So, over here in nine thirty. So, uh, okay, if we do a switch case on message, right? Um, on a text, right? If there's no message, if there's no text, my assumption is that I will be sending. Uh, location. So let's just send a location, and the bot tells me that my location has been saved. So when it, so one of the switch cases is this one. So let me show you what it actually does. It's actually the midpoint uh, bot. So I have a base bot that does a bunch of things. This is uh, this is one step more complicated than than just the normal switch case you see when I when I cloned the the base API. Um, so you initialize the, 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 the class with your bot, and you can register a bunch of commands and its action what it does. Then it gets regex commands. Regex commands actually um, combines all the commands into a regex for your switch case. And then uh, you can execute the action based on the command. So let's go to midpoint, which uses this base bot. So midpoint has a bunch of commands. So you register the command and the action. So when you send a location over, it uses this save location command. And you can get the midpoint using this midpoint action, uh, using the midpoint command. So, so it is really quite easy to to do something like just averaging it and the best part is you don't have to develop the front end for it yeah you don't have to develop a, a client for it and waste so much time you just do we just do what we like which is majority of us i believe like back end stuff we don't want to care about how it looks right and you want everybody to be able to use it and you can tell, hey mom, I used, I did this. You know, I think we can get the whole family to use it. And she'd be like, oh, that's so cool. Yeah, you know, yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, but uh, so um, this is still a work in progress. Um, I want to show you how simple also it is to add the the Google Maps API. So actually, all you have to do is. To get a key over here on Google Maps API for web, you enable an API. And um, all you have to do is actually just add the let long that you have averaged, that I have averaged, into the URL. 
and just paste it here, and then you get a, this reply. And you can just and and what we can do is we can just pass the results, and maybe even just get the. We can tell the bot to plot a location, plot a location using this lat log, and maybe just add a text that says Newton Food Center, and boom, everybody knows where to go. And yeah, this is really simple. So how long did I take to to do this basic bot thing without uh, this thing? Um, I would say probably an, a lunch hour or so. But the best part is this thing, uh, it, it looks nice and everybody can use it. Yeah. And it, it's not just one page. That, yeah. And uh, you can, it can get more complicated. So um, I did another app on Sinatra, which is this one. It actually uses Active Record. Uh, one thing that I have to highlight that it's not actually very good for the bot API, which I believe they will improve, they, they, they roll out improvements quite often, Yeah, is that uh, for your group chat, they don't retain the users. So if you ask it, hey, uh, how many, which users are in this group chat, they actually don't know. So, it's, so the reason why I'm using Active Record is to log all this information. So um, I suspect that this will be redundant soon because most likely they will improve the API. Yeah. So I really hope that um, that you guys will use this somehow to your advantage. Um, so far, uh, what what I've done with my friends, what my friend has done. Uh, is do a PSI thing, which is extremely useful, which I believe everybody, even your grandmother or mom or dad, can use. So, um, yeah, there's so many useful things. Exchange rate, a GIF. Yeah, we can never be tired of GIFs of cats. Yeah. So, I'm pretty much done with this talk. So, um, I work for Neo. I've been with Neo for okay. This is a yeah. Never mind. I work for Neo. So um, if you are a designer, we would love to talk to you. Uh, if you are a developer, we would also love to talk to you. So if you have any questions, which I don't think you have, but this is so simple, uh, please come look for me. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you.